YouTube is pretty powerful in terms of its distribution, and I think they have a lot of power. Now they pay, they pay content creators though, right? They, they will pay, so like I feel like the content creators like YouTube, you know? I actually really, I think YouTube is pretty good. Like I'm, I'm not dissatisfied with YouTube. There's other platforms where the people who are on the platform hate it, right? Yeah, no, I love YouTube too. I think there's a lot of room for improvement, but as far as platforms go. What would you improve about YouTube? Um, I think I would improve the analytics and the metrics. I'd like to understand yeah. why things perform and why things don't. Right, I, like more deeply. I would really like to understand more deeply so I could do more predictive, and so I could do more reverse engineering. I, right. I feel like I'm asking my audience what you want, yeah. and then I'm trying to create that, but the algorithm does not always reward me. It right. seems sometimes arbitrary and random. Right. And it also seems like, well, one of my gripes is that um, there's this guy, Robert, and then of course, Susan at the top right. And one of my gripes to them is that they're always rewarding or applauding or boosting, or putting a spotlight on the biggest creators. Right. And not the middle class or even the beginners. Right. Like they're always saying, you know, to like Marquez Brownlee, great job on your 10 million subscribers, yeah. right? And it's like, you're only celebrating those people. It's, I think you're sending the wrong message. Right. It's like, we're, you're only important if you were what I call like a super tuber, right? Like yeah. the biggest and the best. Yeah. Versus like, well, look at, look at this, you know, woman here in, you know, the middle of nowhere. Yeah. She's got this very unique niche channel and she's talking about really cool things that are yeah. inspiring. Th those are the people that they should be, I think. I love that. I and mean, I think you're right. I think that, uh, you know, they do it better than other platforms where like, you know, Twitch, for example, it is, hard to like grow on Twitch. Like it is a grind. YouTube has more al algorithmic display. Like my content, I only have like 130,000 subs on YouTube, right? So I just started. Um, well, after this, you're probably gonna double that at least. Exactly, so yes. two, I only have 260,000 subs on YouTube. So I just started. So these, you know, but, but I, my content does get shown. It grows regularly, even though I don't have like viral hits in the way of like, you know, it's not like a Mr. Beast video or something. I give away a Ferrari or something. I'm mostly talking about advice, right? Advice, you know, which is not that viral. And so, but it, it's shown to people, it's surfaced to people and YouTube does a decent job of that. But I agree they could do more to, to highlight those uh, middle class and, and, and beginning creators. And the reason it's important is that's where your next superstar is going to come from. You know, it's kind of like the same thing as Y Combinator where you're like trying to find young companies started by like two kids out of a garage. Yeah. It's like, that's going to be the next Reddit, Dropbox, Airbnb, yeah. Twitch. Um, you know, you, if there's an opportunity there. And so for someone else, another content creator, I think TikTok is a good example of that, where they found a way to like, let young content creators create, tr play, experiment and try around, play around with a different format. Yeah. And they've been created a whole ecosystem around that. Yeah, I'll also weigh in my opinion. I think the reason, I think YouTube has an identity crisis. I think they don't know really who they are. Uh, I think I know, at least the signals to me, I get an idea of who I think they want to be. Yeah. And they failed at it every single time. So like in my opinion, I see them every few years trying to make the leap to Hollywood. Right, right, right. Or at least to create a bridge. Yeah. And back in the day, like when like people like Freddie Wong yeah. were creating a lot of content, um, and they were having people like Ben Stiller or Will Ferrell or back in the funnier or die days when yeah. that stuff was coming over to YouTube, there was this bridge. You could kind of see things were happening, but then, you know, Hollywood continued to kind of look down their nose at YouTube. Yeah. And it, it became like, if you're creating content on YouTube with, with a few exceptions, you know, like, um, Rain Wilson did a really good job early on, you know, yeah. Dwight from the office creating his, his channel, Soul Pancake, and it got a lot of traction at first. And he was, you know, one of the Hollywood, you know, popular guys trying to, to do a lot from, you know, the traditional to non-traditional. And then I think the dream was to cross-pollinate, to have the YouTube stars be on TV, yeah. and then the TV stars be on YouTube. But it just has never materialized. Way, right? I think that that's because YouTube, it's ironic but I see this a lot with other big big companies or is even startups is like they're in the mindset of the old model, right? They're like success is it's competitive with TV. 
Yeah. And so what does TV look like? And they've tried that in these, like you said, different ways, right? Like first YouTube, you know, first they were trying to, I think they got a deal with like to put TV on YouTube. And then they have YouTube TV, which is very confusing. And then they have like YouTube originals, which is like, can we make TV out of YouTube people, right? right. And charge for it. And what I think is much more interesting is the people who couldn't exist on TV, but they can exist on YouTube. Those are people like me, right? Like my channel is not mainstream, right? It's like startups, it's wellness, it's niche. It's like people who are following me pers personally. It's like Emma Chamberlain is a good example. Like she's t listening to like a 20 year old girl or 21 or however old she is just riff on like whatever's going on with her life. And right. just that is like, no one would ever write that as a TV show or like underwrite it, right? As a right. TV show. Right. But she can build a 10 million person audience on YouTube aggregating from all across America and the world. Same thing with Twitch, right? Twitch was like, you know, the video game audience, like putting that on TV, people would say, they tried. It was small, it was too small. So they, you have to aggregate the internet to make it work. Right. So that's the power of YouTube. And then those people are going and they're saying, it's like a completely different channel from TV. TV is like, okay, we produce it. You know, there's a production company, talent, they produce it, they sell it to Netflix, it monetize on Netflix. And then now you get paid some scraps of net from Netflix, right? Yeah. This is, is actually interesting and bigger. It's like the, the creator, like they're the talent, they're the production company, they write it, yes. they own it, yeah. and then they use it to like build their own businesses. Yes. And that business can be like, like I'm a VC who makes YouTube. So my business is investing in companies. I don't care about like monetizing the content. Right. The content is all an ad for my VC business, right? It's a platform to launch products or services. Exactly. My friends are launching, who are creators, are launching energy drinks, they're launching membership clubs, they're launching, they're doing fights, right? They're doing like boxing promoting. They're like, it's everything and yeah. that. Jimmy has done the burgers, right? He did the hamburgers and. So to me, that's so much more powerful actually than yeah. the old model. Yes. And let me underscore why yeah. I think that's true is because I would rather have a thousand true fans who would, you know, rest on my every word than 10 million viewers who are just passively watching, swiping, turning channels, not paying attention. I'd rather have that actively engaged audience when I say, I love this food or I love that book, that they will listen and go do it, than, you know, just this passive listen. Passive yeah. Listen. And Netflix is interesting too because Netflix and Amazon are also playing that vanity metric game. They're trying to win Academy Awards. They're trying to buy talent, right? Um, they're trying to buy credibility. And it's working because they don't have this, they don't have the internet, right? It's, it is like cable TV yeah. packaged into programs. Yeah, and it's distributed on, it's a little bit of a bridge between the internet and the old world, right? There's distributed on Roku's and all this like you know, smart TVs and stuff, and it's on your phone, like it's everywhere, and they put a lot of money behind it, right? So yeah. that's obviously a strategy that works, like obviously people still watch TV and movies. I'm just saying YouTube's strategy is a little bit, you know, they're looking at this old strat thing, but really they have some, they're sitting on a much more interesting gold mine. That's what I think too. I think that's the difference is the Netflix, the Amazon, the Hulu, and the, you know, whoever will come next, that is very much, they're trying to become the, the movie studio yeah. or the TV network. Whereas YouTube should really focus, I mean, let's face it, it's probably the 80-20 rule in play, right? Like 80% of the revenue probably comes from 20% of the creators. Yeah. But if YouTube would really understand their identity and, and focus on the 80% of those creators yeah. with all that potential and help, help them grow, whether it's give them better metrics or better understanding or help them, you know, connect, I yeah. think there's a big um, missed opportunity to connect people. It's so hard. Yeah. to collaborate on YouTube. I think, I think there's, um, I would look at, you know, if I was YouTube and I would be like, how many people are being employed by YouTube? Like either directly or indirectly, like, you know, me or like you and like how many people are we employing to make, do all this editing and, and stuff. And then how many are employed by Netflix, right? And all the downstream and all the productions that they're doing. Yeah. And that's like the impact, right? Like that you can, I think, I think there is. It's probably 10,000 to one. Huge, huge impact that YouTube can have and it's international, it's everywhere. Like, to me, and then there's all these downstream businesses that all these people can build. And that is the power of YouTube. That I think is, is kind of like, I think YouTube is a much more valuable business than Netflix in the long run. Yeah, and, and you could, YouTube could potentially do a revenue share 
by helping to promote those products too if they wanted to. They could get a piece yeah, of that. Build like, you know, kind of like Facebook is building Instagram stores, right? Yeah. So that's like a very obvious model, right? But yeah. like building ways for to c conduct commerce inside YouTube, I think is really yeah. powerful. Or like do subscription fan clubs or all these other things that YouTubers are doing. I mean, we were just sitting back, you know, <laughs> chopping it up, reminiscing about the good old days and all that. <laughs> you know, tracking my roots, where I came from and where I'm going. Like I say, man, always said it. It's not about the destination. It's all about the journey. Ain't nothing changed but the weather. The dangling carrot that hang from the rear view. Uh -huh. Your dreams in the past ain't nowhere near you. Uh -huh. Backseat drivers got nothing but two cents. Shotgun riders too biased, they all liars. I should get an A for effort, I'm too tired. But I'm never giving up, that's why I'm kinda admired. Role model, like it or not, I gotta play it. Sugarcoat the rhyme sometimes, but still say it.